Welcome back to The Daily Poem. I'm David Kern, and today's Friday, June 19th, 2020. Today's poem is by an English poet, John Clare, who lived from 1793 to 1864. He was the son of a farmer, and he became known, as I've said before on the, here on the podcast, for his poems about that lifestyle. He both celebrated it and was uh, bemoaning its uh, disappearance as he was living through the Industrial Revolution in England. The poem that I'm going to read today is called Summer Moods. It's a good poem for this time of year. It goes like this. I love at eventide to walk alone down narrow lanes or hung with dewy thorn where from the long grass underneath the snail jet black creeps out and sprouts his timid horn. I love to muse o'er meadows newly mown where withering grass perfumes the sultry air, where bees search round with sad and weary drone, in vain for flowers that bloomed but newly there, while in the juicy corn the hidden quail cries, Wet my foot, and hid as thoughts unborn the fairy-like and seldom-seen land-rail utters, Crake, crake, like voices underground, right glad to meet the evening's dewy veil, and see the light fade into glooms around. So John Clare was uh, known as the Northamptonshire peasant poet. And apparently, you you can even find this on Wikipedia, but also you can find a biography of him if you're interested in learning more. He did not get a lot of formal education. And so he wrote in the dialect of his homeland, of of his place, and of his people. And so he actually introduced quite a few words into literature at large that were primarily words that were local to his area. And so here what we have is the interaction of this Northamptonshire peasant poet with the literary canon at large. This is a sonnet. Um, it's a very well, it's a very formal poem. It's very well structured. Um, he, it's very um, aesthetically pleasing. And we have that merging uh, with the sort of peasant poet nature of John Clare. In that way, he is, um, he's a true artist, I think. You know, I I love John Clare's poems uh, for that reason. Uh, Here we get these references to the, to, to flowers and animals and the things that they say. But one of the things that I really love about this poem is the way uh, the, the sort of sultry nature of summer plays out in the poem. He uses that word, the sultry air. And surrounding that phrase, the sultry air, is these sort of sultry lines that feel warmed with a, you know, that feel uh, bursting with humidity. Uh, they, they slow you down. There's a, there's a tiredness about them. Uh, like, like you, you might be at the end of the, the end of a summer day and you've got your, your, your tea or your lemonade or whatever it is. And you're, uh, you're lying under a tree or on a porch and you're you know, listening to the ice cubes clink against the glass. That's the sort of experience that this poem suggests right in the middle. There is, for example, starting in line four, we get this repetition of the S sound, which I think plays into that and it slows you down. S is a hard letter to say very quickly over and over again. And so we get lines like this. I love to muse or meadows newly moan where withering grass perfumes the sultry air, where bees search round with sad and weary drone, in vain for flowers that bloomed but newly there. So we get the at the repetition of the S sounds, we get the uh, combination of the, the W sound, the W, you know, with, weary, uh, newly, you know, uh, where, withering, where, um, those sounds plus the harder B sounds, uh, combined with these sort of sultry S sounds. And that combination slows you down. And, and that formal choice is really, really artistically interesting uh, and makes this poem uh, really interesting to spend some time with. But then that, you know, you combine that aesthetic choice with some of the colloquialisms we get in the poem. And you, you see Claire merging, as I said earlier, the literary canon with his own place of Northamptonshire. Uh, and you know, 
that's what makes great poets last. I think great artists last oftentimes is the merging of the local with the, with the truly rich, with truly rich aesthetic choices. Uh, and that's why I, you know, I think although John Clare is perhaps not known as well known as Keats or Wordsworth or something, he's one of the great English poets. So here one more time is his poem, Summer Moods. I love it even tied to walk alone down narrow lanes or hung with dewy thorn where from the long grass underneath the snail jet black creeps out and sprouts his timid horn. I love to muse or meadows newly mown where withering grass perfumes the sultry air where bees search round with sad and weary drone in vain for flowers that bloomed but newly there. While in the juicy corn the hidden quail cries, wet my foot, and hid as thoughts unborn the fairy-like and seldom seen land rail utters, crack, crack, like a voices underground, right glad to meet the evening's dewy veil and see the light fade into glooms around. This has been The Daily Poem. Thanks so much for listening. I'll be back on Monday with another poem for you.